<laughs> Welcome to the Haskell rank, the series where we solve programming problems, but you know, in Haskell. So what we're gonna solve next? We're gonna solve divisible sum pairs. You're given an array of n integers and a positive number k. Find and print the number of ij pairs where i is less than j and ith element of the array plus jth element of the array is divisible by k. Basically we have to iterate through all of the possible pairs of the array and just check the sum of these pairs and see if they are divisible by k or not. The solution takes a bunch of of numbers and returns a single number. According to the input format, the first number is the k and the rest of them is the numbers that we have to go through and stuff like that. I think this particular problem is actually a good opportunity to introduce something called list comprehension. Let's take a look at it. List comprehension, if you're ever programmed in Python, I'm pretty sure you know what is a list comprehension. I don't know what is a formal definition for list comprehension, but I understand it as a syntax sugar for generating lists. For example, you start with the brackets, right? And then you provide some kind of a generator. Let's say that I want to generate i, which is the range from 1 to 10. And then I just want this list to consist of these numbers. And this is going to be like numbers from 1 1 to 10. I can add another generator also from 1 to 10 and say I want the elements of that list to be pairs of i and j. And what this entire thing does, it does Cartesian product of these two generators and generates 100 pairs. So using that syntax, we can actually quite easily iterate through all of the pairs of the array. Apart from the generators, list comprehension can also consist of filters. What is a filter? Filter is a simple condition. For example, we don't like any pairs that start with one and we say that explicitly. Please know a pairs with, that start with one. And here you go. There will be no single pair that start with one. Actually, there is only 10 of them. But generating pairs like that is not going to work for us because the order of numbers doesn't really matter. So we're going to generate a lot of duplicates. So we have to generate pairs without the duplicates. The easiest way I know is to associate an index with each element using zip and just filter only the pairs where i is less than j. So this will generate all of the pairs without duplicates. But we also have to check that the sum of the pair is divisible by k. We can also express that as the filter. And what's interesting, we don't really care about specific elements of that list. We only care about the amount of the elements of that list. So we can pretty much say that the elements of that list can be undefined and then just calculate their length. That's it. That's the solution, believe it or not. So let's grab the data. Let's take k and the rest of the numbers. Let's copy paste them and let's turn all of that into to a list and apply solve to it. So the solution is five. What is the correct answer? It's also five. Okay. But of course, this is not an interactive program that we can submit. Let's actually wrap it into an interactive problem. First thing we do, we separate everything by words. We skip the first element because we don't need it. It's just the number of elements. Then we convert everything to numbers. Then we pass it through solve. Then the solution is integer. We convert integer back to string. And that should be our final solution. Let's try to submit it to the system. Let's check if it compiles on their side. It does actually compile and let's submit the code. Congratulations. Next problem. Hmm. I just thought maybe undefined is not really great for that. Maybe we can just use this. I think it also may work. We can pretty much put everything there, like 42. It's still going to work because we don't care about the specific elements. Migratory. How do you even pronounce it? Migratory birds. You have been asked to help study the population of birds migrating across the continent. Each type of bird you are interested in will be identified by an integer value. Each time a particular kind of bird is spotted, its ID number will be added to your array of sightings. You would like to be able to find out which type of bird is most common given a list of sightings. Your task 
is to print the type of number of that bird. And if two or more types of birds are equally common, choose the type with the smallest ID number. So, okay, the first line contains an integer and the second line contains the, the numbers, uh, the sightings, uh, the ID of the birds. So, let's grab the data and let's play a little bit with it. The first thing I would do, I would probably sort the data. We don't really have sort uh, by default, we have to include module data list. Once we have sorted the data, we can actually group same numbers. So now we can clearly see which kind of birds we encounter the most. Now we have to pick up the list with the most amount of elements. But what is interesting, if we have several lists with the same amount of elements, for example, if we had three fives, we had to pick up this one and ignore this one, even though they have the same amount. What's interesting is that sort guarantees that the ID with the smallest number is going to be to the left. So what I want to do, I want to use second sort, second stable sort to sort these lists by their size. So for that, we have an interesting function called sort by. What this function does, it takes a function that compares two elements and how it compares them it takes these two elements and returns something called ordering and ordering is the type that has three constructors less than equal and greater than so using this function sort by is going to be able to sort your list correctly so for, for the convenience in Haskell we have a function called compare that takes two things that are comparable and returns one of the constructors of the ordering so for example if you want to sort by numbers and numbers by the way integers let's say integers are comparable you see so that means you can easily sort numbers with just compare function but in our case what we have to compare we have to compare lists and lists are not really comparable but um, maybe they are comparable I don't really remember yeah, they are comparable, but they are comparable not in the sense that we want. We want to be able to compare the list by their size, but not by their elements. We don't really care about the elements of those lists. We, the only thing we care is the size of that list. So that means we will have to write our own custom compare. We can actually do that using some Lambda stuff. We can define a function that takes two elements, then invokes compare on their length. But that's not really convenient. You see, this is such a huge expression so I know a better way to construct such function we will need another interesting function from a module called data functions it's just data function a single one we probably want to add it to our solution as well this function is called on it's a really complicated function I would say it takes two other functions first it takes functions of two arguments and a function of a single argument and what it returns it returns another function of two arguments you see, you can actually clearly see. So it takes that function and that function. And what it does, it adapts that function with this function to look like that. You see? So this function takes B arguments, but it doesn't know how to treat A arguments. But this function knows how to convert A to B, and it sounds really complicated. But if you look at how it's used, it actually becomes quite easy. For example, you can uh, take a uh, function compare. Function compare is the function of two arguments, you see? It's a function of two arguments, the same as the first function for on. And if you take the function length, length is a function of a single argument so we can actually compare on length and that is a new function which compares lists by their length and furthermore it sounds like an actual English so now we can take our group what the heck okay I guess we have to import data list again okay we can take our group and sort it by compare on length and you see well it was already sorted by length. So there's nothing interesting in that. I guess to actually make it produce something useful, we have to add additional arguments. For example, we're gonna have two ones. And you see, when we you have two ones, it actually sorts the list by their length. But we want this to be sorted in reversed order. We can actually approach that in uh, different ways. We can actually just reverse that, but that's not really interesting and not really fast. What else can we do? We can actually modify compare function 
function to compare the lists differently. For that, we can use function flip. So what this function does, it takes function of two arguments and returns function the same, absolutely the same function, but with the arguments flipped. You see, it's a really abstract function. It takes function of two arguments and flips its arguments. We can use that function on compare, which will effectively swap the compare function and make the list sort in a reversed order. And what's interesting, since sort by is a stable sort, it will preserve the result of the first sort and the group with the smallest ID is going to be first. And this is our solution. So we only have to get it. So we're going to extract the group, the first group, and we're going to extract the first element of the group. And that's the number we are looking for. So this simple line is the solution for this problem for migratory birds. All right, let's turn this into an actual solution. Let's just take this line and convert it into a function, solve a function which takes a bunch of integers, right? And returns a single integer, which is the answer. And you see, since it's just a really long function composition, we can apply at a reduction here and convert this entire expression into a point-free notation by adding a bunch of dots. All right, we have a solve function and let's wrap it into an interactive program. We're gonna use interact function. First, as usual, we split everything by words. Then we skip the first number because we don't care about it. It's just an amount of numbers. Then you convert everything to numbers. Then you solve that. And since the result is a number, you convert it back to a string. This is supposed to be the final solution. So let's check if it compiles on their side. It compiles and let's submit that for a final submission. Ta-da! Next problem. Your YouTube channel is infected with PHP, please remove the channel. No, never. PHP is my favorite language.